We continue our 2023 positional breakdown. This week, we're going to look at the wide receivers on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your host, Justin Goddard. Bills Mafia, welcome in and thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. My name is Justin. I will be your host. And this show is brought to you by 26 Shirts. Um, we've been talking about 26 shirts for a long time. Check them out. Awesome designs. Um, great things in the community. Um, this week we're breaking down the 2023 wide receivers and I wanted to leave a full episode for just this room because I think, I think this is one of the biggest talking points that we're going to have this off season. Um, there's some needs across this roster. There's some holes that need to be filled, but wide receivers that skill position, you know, sexy numbers, scoring touchdowns. It's one of the things that draws our focus more than, you know, what does our defensive tackle rotation look like? Um, Not that anyone is any more important than the other, or you can do without one. Um, Just kind of them sexy positions get our attention more. Um, And I think not only, do we have some big question marks at the wide receiver position? Um, we have holes that are going to need to be filled. We're going to have, you know, the Steph Diggs offseason drama, um, all that kinds of stuff. Um, so I feel like there's a lot to talk about with the wide receiver position. I have some ideas, just my initial ideas of what I'd like to see the team do. Um, we'll get into kind of more of that as we move into free agency and the draft and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, just want to kind of get into what we saw last year and, and where we go from here. Uh, so wide receivers last year that got the bulk of the work, work uh, Stefan Diggs, Gabe Davis, Khalil Shakir, um, kind of some of the ancillary pieces there, Trent Sherfield, Deontay Hardy, Andy Isabella was in the mix. Uh, of course, Justin Shorter spent the year uh, basically on the injured reserve. Um, and then I'm going to talk about KJ Hamler a little bit. Added him as a futures contract. Um, so just starting off at the top with Stefan Diggs. I'm I'm going to say this right now, and I'm going to try very hard to, to hold myself to it. Uh, I'm not doing the Diggs drama this offseason. Um I feel like this is just something that gets generated by like the media and it's it's like this this clickbait type stuff of like what did Steph Diggs say and it keeps Bill's Mafia engaged and we always react to it and we got to tell everybody you know how much of a bum he is or how stupid they are that they think he's going to get traded or released whatever uh i feel like these narratives just come up and and they use it because they know how passionate bills mafia is and you know in a slow time for the nfl nfl season where you know that your average fan is you know taking a few months off like like we're still all over twitter and you know finding every little press conference all that i I have 99% confidence that Steph Diggs is on the roster next year. And I have like 98% confidence he's on the following season. Um, just the way his contract is structured. We, we kicked the can down the road with him twice. Um, this year, something like $30 million. If he's off the roster, you know, be it trade release, whatever. This is, this is dead cap money that, it's counting against our cap regardless if he's there or not. It's uh, due to the restructure. It's not like, hey, let's just get Arizona to take this $30 million. Like, no, it's money that has to count against the cap because we basically, and we used a credit card and, and the bills are coming due. So the, the money's already been paid, products already been bought, and, and now we're paying off that credit card. Um, 
going after this year, it, it drops down to a more palatable something like $20 million. I, I don't see, unless something catastrophic happens, I don't see a world where Brandon Bean is willing to eat $20 million of dead cap um, to not have the best one of the best players on your roster on the roster and also the massive hole that you create that you now have $20 million less to spend on it. Um, so Diggs isn't going anywhere. I We want to talk about the second half of the season last year after Joe Brady took over. Um, did he have some disappointing numbers? Yes. Um, but I think there's a few factors that go into that. Um, some of them we've, talked about throughout the season as it was happening. Um, you know, you have Brady taking over as offensive coordinator and, you know, it, m- mid-season you're not installing your whole own playbook. It's not all your ideas. You're you're taking what, what was installed by Dorsey and you're making your own tweaks to it. Um, so I'm very interested to see what happens with full off-season of um, install, repetitions, all that. I'm confident that Joe Brady's going to find a way to get Steph Diggs going. Um, you also have down the stretch here, there was several games where Diggs was ending with, you know, whatever, 30, 40 yards. And there was like three or four that Josh had him open deep and overshot him. Um, there was the one that we're all going to remember going right through Diggs' hands. Uh, I just think football can be such a a game of nuance. I don't know if that's the right word for it. It's easy to look at the stat box and be like, yep, second half of the season, Diggs was bad. Ergo, Diggs sucks now. Got to get rid of him. Um, But really, when you just, if you're able to hit on just a couple of those plays, um, it takes, you know, a 30, 40, 50 yard game receiving and it makes it another one added to his collection of getting 100 yards. Um, I think there's a ton that goes into this. There's, you know, all the narratives about Diggs being a diva, stirring up drama and everything. You notice that you see all that, like, from meteor reports. If you hear any of the players on the team talking about Diggs. Uh, he's a great team or teammate. He's a great leader. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to take... I'm going to take the player's word for it more than I'm going to take um, media-driven stories. I mean, they're, the media doesn't make money if people aren't watching, listening, engaging, all that. Um That's all I really got on Diggs. Um, I think he's still a tremendous talent. He is getting a little bit older. um, So I I would love to see significant investments in the draft this year, not only for um, what we'll get to here with what we're going to have to replace. Um, But like I said, Diggs is getting older. I I think he has a skill set that translates to aging out nicely. Um, So I don't think... This has to be anything where we have to get rid of him anytime soon. I just think as we get up to, you know, a couple of years down the line here, you know, maybe you can start transitioning to him to like your number two, your one, one B to another receiver. And I I think that's something you have to start planning for now um, to give you as many cracks at the plate at making sure you've replaced him with, you know, a bona fide number one receiver. Um, He's got the skill set of it was never it was never based on being a burner and, you know, just running past defenders. And it was never based on, you know, using his big body to to moss defensive backs out there. It was always kind of predicated on just elite route running and getting separation and and getting the ball. Um, So I think that's something that. That's not something that you lose overnight. You know, that's the footwork. That's the skill. It's the nuance. Um, so I think he's I think he's good for another three, four years. And as as 
you know, time catches up and like it does with everybody, just having that plan in place to be able to kind of transition um, is my number one reason um, to kind of start looking at getting younger, getting cheaper. Um, particularly, I'd like to address this through the draft and I, I would like I'm just saying some sort of significant investment. Um, I don't, I don't want to sit here and say it's got to be a receiver round one. Um, just you don't know how the draft is going to go. You could have a run of six, seven receivers, and the next guy you have on your board has a round three evaluation. Um, this is something I, I'd like to see somewhere in the top three rounds. Somebody that can contribute now and. Um, you know, can develop into that. It doesn't have to be a number one receiver year one, but give me somebody that can be, you know, a viable number two, number three option. Um, and then I'd also like to see a, <clears throat> a veteran addition here. And this is going to be kind of as we move into Gabe Davis here. Um, in my mind, I'm picturing you know, these, these guys that we added that were kind of value contracts towards the end of their career, they got these, you know, one, two year deals. I'm talking Emmanuel Sanders, Smoke Brown. You know, we've had a few guys come into the building that were kind of true number two receivers that were towards the tail end of their career, um, whatever. And they come here, they have the best year with with Josh Allen. And that kind of leads me into Gabe Davis here. And I want to start off right from the rip and just say I absolutely love Gabe Davis. Um, I love who he is as a teammate. I love the way he works out there. I love that he plays damn near 100% of the snaps. Um, I love his willingness to block. I love a lot of the things that he brings to this team. Um and I love it even more if he was a number three, four receiver. Um, I think he kind of got over promoted to the wide receiver too. We've done this experiment for two years. It, it it's not working out. Um, if you you can, I've seen a, a bunch of stuff. Um, I kind of looked like his you know farewell post to Bills Mafia. Um, he kind of like put up his stats and like yeah he's. He's got some banana stats. Um, he also had several games this year where he had zero catches. Some of the games, zero targets. Um, there was a few games where he was like under three targets. And with Josh Allen as your quarterback, with Diggs on one side, you just need more out of that wide, re wide receiver two spot. And I don't even need it to be like insane production, but I need it to be somebody that can get, you know, five, six, seven threatening looks, you know, targets a game that's going to be like, okay, we got to pay attention to him now too. And that's going to free up digs a little bit. It's going to free up the other receivers. Um, I just think Davis kind of became, he kind of always was in, it just got brought to light more that he was kind of this one trick pony that was, you know, a down the field threat when play was breaking down. It wasn't, you know, just a straight burner blowing the top off the defense. He was great in the scramble drill with Josh Allen. And, you know, as the number four receiver, that was kind of an off afterthought by the defense when the play broke down and, you know, he's working back to Josh Allen. It was, it was fantastic. Um, as the number two receiver, it, it just it hasn't been enough consistently. Um, yeah, you can pop off and have these huge games. But I, I think the biggest concern here is the dollars that he's probably going to get in free agency when you can start looking at, you know, some of the yards he put up and some of the touchdowns and you're looking at the Chiefs overtime game a couple of years ago. Um, I think he's going to go out there and he's going to get you know, like 10 plus and, and good for him. Go get the bag. Um, it, it's not a contract that I would be willing to sign up for. Um, so kind of cheers to you, Gabe Davis. Go get your money. Um, that's it. 
Um, so that'd be kind of where I'm looking to replace not necessarily that position through the draft, but that's where I'd be looking to bring in um, one of one of these veterans that's been doing it and just kind of looking to get a couple more million dollars, maybe do a little ring chasing. Um, somebody that's got a little bit left in the tank and pair them up with Josh Allen. Um, bring in that rookie. You know, personally, I want to see a couple rookie receivers in this draft. Give me like round one through three and then one like in four through seven um bet on some trades pick pick some guys you think are going to develop and kind of start working towards that long-term plan because you're not you know right now in in my estimation we're replacing a wide receiver too um in my estimation we're about two three years away from needing a one and a two um so invest this year, invest early, invest often, and do it again next year. I'm going to take a quick break and on the other side, talk about the remainder of the receiver course. Stick around. Hey, this is Dick DeGroat, Bill's dad. Now back to the show. Welcome back in and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Uh, if you made it this far, as always, do me a favor. Hit the like button, share it, subscribe it. Tell a friend. Um, off season has been a little bit wonky. Want to make sure you're uh, subscribed so you're not missing any episodes. Um, like I said, we've changed our release date to Wednesday um, throughout the off season. A lot of crazy stuff going on in life right now, so might be some weeks that we're a little bit off on that schedule. So just make sure you're subscribed. You won't miss any of them. And uh, it does help us out tremendously, and, and it is appreciated. I um, want to talk a little bit here about some of the kind of ancillary weapons to this wide receiver room, and want to start off with Khalil Shakir, and had an absolutely awesome year um, this past season, and it kind of went back to, you know, two years ago down the stretch, he started making an impact. Um, but some of the wildest plays that we saw this season, I'm thinking of, you know, the one where he's spinning, looks like he's down and, you know, corks it out the other way and takes it in for a touchdown. Um, just some awesome play from him this year. Um, I loved him coming to the Bills out of the draft. I think he was an absolute steal. Um, and it seems like he's really starting to get that chemistry going with Josh Allen and... My my first thing I want to address with Shakir is because I've already seen a ton of it. It's, you know, I move him to wide receiver too if Gabe Davis, if we like Gabe Davis walk. And I I don't really care what the numbering system is. Um, I think we've been talking so long about getting the Beasley replacement in the slot. And I think Shakir can play some outside. Um, and that's fine. But I think Shakir has become that Beasley replacement that we've been talking about. Um, and I I think he's a much... He has the potential to be a, a much better Cole Beasley. I think he's got more athleticism. He's got some more speed. Um, he's a lot younger. You know, when Beasley came to the Bills, he was up there pushing 30 or in his 30s. Um, so I think where he is right now is perfect. Uh, let him keep growing and developing there. Let him keep working on that chemistry with Josh Allen. Um, he had insane efficiency this year, um, just yards and targets, and he was catching everything that was thrown his way. And he was getting the yak, and that's something that we haven't seen a ton of for a long time with the Bills. Um, just the yards that he was able to get after catching the ball. Um, super impressive, super encouraging. And going forward, I, I want to keep him right where he is and just increase his workload. Um, and I think going forward, if you're looking at kind of your primary weapons as Diggs, Shakir, Cook, Kincaid, and 
hopefully an early investment at the wide receiver two position or, you know, that veteran addition. I think you're pretty much ready to go into next season locked and loaded with that. Um, obviously, you'll have to do some tinkering to the tail end of, of, of that depth chart, but Diggs, Shakir, Kincaid, Cook as your primary options and somebody else slotting in at that number two spot, that I'm good. Let's, I'm ready to play football right now as soon as you get that filled. Um, so super excited for what we saw from Shakir. Super excited to see more from him going forward. Um, next two I'm going to kind of lump together, and that's Trent Shearfield and Deontay Hardy. Um, lumping them together because we kind of added them at the same time, and they kind of had the same year to me. Um, I was really excited for both of them, and... They were both pretty disappointment free agent signings, albeit in, in different ways. Um, Shearfield seemed to get more of the receiving options um, when Diggs would be taking a breather or, you know, somebody would get injured, whatever. Um, he had some horrible issues with drops and especially when you're trying to make an impact on limited snaps, like that's just, you can't have that. Um, I mean, you, you're you're a third, fourth option in this passing game when you come in for plays. And, you know, if you're getting those looks, it's because everybody was kind of covered up and the defense was saying, we, we dare you to beat us. Um, and they won that more often than not. Um, so Sherfield, it was a fun year. I'm I'm good with uh, just kind of letting that letting that fall by the wayside. With Deontay Hardy, I think it's a little bit more of an interesting case here. Um, it's because he did kind of start making some impact on the offense um, towards the tail end of the season here. Um, I'd have to, I'd I'd be interested in doing something with his contract if he's staying because he he was making pretty significant money. Um, for what his role was in this offense. Um, but he's a guy I, I talked about um, a bit when I was talking about the running backs with Naheem Hines. Um, I think he does bring value as a returner. Um, that being said, the return game is like more and more coming out of football. Um, you know, you barely see kickoff returns at this point. And even punts, you know, there's some more returns on punts, but it's often, you know, kind of so calculated for trying to get it inside the 20. Like the biggest thing you're really looking for is the smart decisions of if you're letting it bounce or if you're bear catching it at like the 14. Um, I think for what it's worth, he did a great job with that. Um, I don't think it's something that you need to pay big money for. Um, so this is this was kind of where I was at with the Heinz. They're they're like interchangeable for me. Um where uh I'm willing to keep one but not the other, and either per either player would have to be um ripping up the contract and doing something different with it. Um that being said. I think my preference would probably be Hines, just seeing what um, Joe Brady had going with the running backs. Um, and also, if we kind of have my idea play out of what the receiver room would look like, um, drafting a couple of rookies and adding a, a veteran for like the number two, you're talking about, you know, a uh, like six receiver at best for Hardy to kind of just be a special teams guy. Um, I don't know if he's signing up for that at this point in his career. He had a good amount of production in New Orleans, so maybe it was kind of just an off year. Maybe he was still recovering from the turf toe and just wasn't quite right and thinks he is now. Um, I think I would lean more towards Hines, but then obviously question marks there with the knee coming, the knee injury, so... Um, maybe we see one or the other, maybe we see neither. Um, but that's kind of where I stand on, on 
Deontay Hardy. I do think we saw a little bit of his juice coming back in. Uh, I don't know. There's just a lot of times throughout the season that it looked like he was kind of some lazy route running, uh, just kind of knew that he wasn't the target and like he wasn't going to be the read in, on the play. So maybe he was unhappy with his role. I, I'm not sure. I, I, if I, if I was predicting, I would say we don't see Deontay Hardy again. Um, there's a much clearer path to Heinz making the roster and having an impact as like a number, whatever you want, probably number three running back um, that contributes on special teams. I think there's, more perceived value there um, than a wide receiver who's really not going to get on the field. I mean, it, it's basically then Hardy's taking up kind of like that Kumaro spot and just to me having less impact on special teams because he's, you know, he's not going to be out there playing as a gunner or anything. He's a return guy. Um, so there's that. And then wrapping up, just kind of some of the the tail end of the roster guys here. Um, Justin Shorter, obviously rookie draft pick from last year, spent pretty much the whole season on injured reserve. We didn't see him any regular season action. Um, Andy Isabella and KJ Hamler, who was signed to a futures contract. Um, Shorter. Um I mean, from what we saw through him throughout like the preseason last year, he looks like an absolute god. A um, lot of work to do with his actual um, football game for the NFL level. Uh, I think it's something that gets out there a lot when you see, you know, like his pictures posted and people are like, he looks like DK Metcalf, therefore he is DK Metcalf. Um, if he was playing like DK Metcalf, he would have been on the field. That's all I really got for that. Um, I, I think that there w were reasons that we drafted him and brought him in. I think there's traits that, um, Bean and McDermott are hoping that we can develop in, you know, combining that physical build that he has in improving on his skill set. I think you have the chance to have an impactful receiver there. Um, I think he's somebody that will be kind of like one of our camp darlings over the next couple of years. And maybe he develops, um, not saying that we can't hit on a receiver in the late rounds. Um, Shakir was a fifth round pick. Um, I think there's the potential there. If I'm looking at the wide receiver room going into next season, I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and put any eggs into the basket of Justin Shorter being um one of the active roster guys. Um he might be. And I think there's a lot to see between when we really last got a look at him, which was last preseason, to you know, what work was he doing in the building throughout the season when we didn't see anything from him. Um, what does the offseason look like? Can he take over kind of that tail end of the roster, Kumaro special teams? Because uh, he was a mess in special teams when we saw it last year. Um, can he work on that and kind of earn his way onto the roster as, you know, like a six receiver doing that? Um, I think there is definitely some ceiling to tap into here. And it's... It's a matter of if he can put it together, if the coaching staff can get him where he needs to be. Um, but like I said, I, it, there's, uh, I'm not, not putting any stock into that as we're you know figuring out how to retool this room going into the next season. Um, and then just kind of rounding it out with Andy Isabella and KJ Hamler. Um, I think fairly similar type players, you know, kind of undersized guys. With that really quick twitchy speed, um, I, I see a path where one of them will be sticking around on the practice squad. And I'd, I'd say one of them, but not both. Um, Hamler's had some struggles with injuries. Um, 
I believe he was a second round pick and kind of like has all the tools to justify him being a second round pick. It's just kind of been a matter of health and availability for him. Um, I think these two guys kind of play into that. Um, the Hardy Hines return job conversation that we were having. Um, I think if either of these guys can make it to the active roster, they they can they can be a return specialist. And um, Hardy, as it stands now, is due something like five million dollars this year. Um, those two guys are coming in dirt cheap, so. Uh, but like I said, for the return game not being what it's used to, and especially when your quarterback is Josh Allen and you have this offense, my primary thing that I want from the returner is just smart decisions and ball security and make sure Josh Allen gets the ball again. Um, I've been saying this for years, going back to McKenzie being the punt returner. Um, having somebody back there that can make some electric plays is cool and all. Um, I think it's I think it's something that I liked more when we had like <laughs> bad Bills teams that was like, oh, we might need a special teams play to win this game. Um, more often than not, we're not really in that position where, you know, it we get a punt return for a touchdown here, we're cooked. Um, it's usually, you know, even in like the worst of spots, you get like a minute left in a timeout and you have Josh Allen as your quarterback. I'm going to take my chances there versus, you know, really investing in a returner that might be able to get that done. Um, so I think these two guys are going to be kind of afterthoughts, but I think they, I think they have a sneaky chance to make the roster. If we kind of go that direction um, for the returner um, rather than kind of paying this big money. Um, but yeah, kind of my thoughts on the wide receiver room. I'll tell you right now, Diggs drama going forward. If you're looking for coverage on that, I'm not doing it this year. Um, the only thing I want to see about Diggs is when we get to, when we get to the training camps and he's showing up and getting some work in with Josh Allen. But uh, I'm not buying into any of the drama this year. I'm not convinced that he won't be on the team. Um, I'm not doing any of that this year. Um, as we move forward, we'll kind of talk about we'll get into free agency and look at it, some of my targets that I'm looking for um, for that wide receiver two spot. And then as we inch closer to the draft, we'll kind of look at some options um, there through the draft as well. Um, good news is I don't think there's a ton of holes on this team to be filled right now. I'd say your big three is kind of defensive tackle safety and wide receiver. And the cap was just announced at 255 million, which is kind of it's some like 14 million over what we were um, expecting it to be. Um, bills are still over the cap right now, but by less, so that's cool. Um, so there's going to be a little bit more money to play with here. Um, so a lot of options going forward, and not a ton of spots that we need to invest in. Um, so some money to play with and where where they choose to make the investments will be kind of more interesting to tell us uh, what the draft might look like. Um, but i got a lot of off season. Those will be future episodes as we move into the free agency and, and some mock drafts and things like that. Um, so make sure you're subscribed and tune in every week. Um, we're going to continue this um, position breakdown next week. Um, so make sure you don't miss it. Um, but as always, that's going to do it for tonight. And go Bills. Go Bills.